This is the Pickersgill's reed frog. It's critically endangered, with only a few fragmented pockets of its habitat left. It might be tiny, but the Pickersgill's is of a great scientific interest and the subject of the first captive breeding project on a threatened South African frog ever undertaken. The Pickersgill's reed frog is endemic to the coast of South Africa's KwaZulu-Natal province. Its habitat has almost all been lost to mining, agriculture and development. An intensive study into its breeding habits and genetics has been launched by the Endangered Wildlife Trust. To save this frog, scientists must understand everything about it. One of the sites known to have a population of Pickersgill's frogs is at Mount Moreland near Durban. It's the last remaining wetland in the area, not even a full square mile in size, and sandwiched between vast tracts of sugarcane fields and an international airport. Dr. Jean Terron, manager of EWT's Threatened Amphibian Program, is running this project. Jean and her team spend a lot of time in the field, often joined by grad student Mia Trenner. They spend their evenings going on frogging expeditions to gather the relevant data. Super sexy attire. Every frogger needs a good headlight. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go find some frogs. So at the moment with Pickers Girls Reed Frog, there's two sort of main research streams that we're looking at. The first is getting a better idea of population size. So here at Mount Moreland, an initial population estimate has been made and we're using that methodology to roll out across the various sites and we're implementing a monitoring plan for various sites to try and gauge whether there's population fluctuations and get an idea of trends. The Pickersgill's reed frog is also being bred in captivity for the first time for a threatened species. Three organizations are part of this project, including the National Zoo in Pretoria, the Joburg Zoo, and Ushaka SeaWorld in Durban. The South African Association for Marine Biological Research has been involved in marine conservation for over 60 years. And we realize that there is an incredibly strong link between what happens in our freshwater ecosystems and what happens in our oceans. Because obviously all the oceans have, are fed with the water coming down from our freshwater ecosystems. So in order for us to look after our environment, we need to look at it holistically, not in separate ecosystems. And that's really some of where our interest in frogs came in. Carl Schlams is the senior herpetologist here at Ushaka SeaWorld and is the man responsible for looking after the tadpoles and froglets. We found a pair, uh, a, a, a mating pair actually calling in the wild. We actually collected that pair. So what we did with that pair, we kept it separate. We kept it in a tub like this, um, a desert den, and it took approximately 14 days, two weeks, um, before they actually laid. They laid a gelatinous clump on, on, on the tub and what was quite interesting too was the fact that the female actually went to that nest uh, and that egg nest and, and kept it moist. So it's, it was an observation that was, was very interesting. From that mass it took about four days before they started dripping down. Okay, in this tub we've got uh, tadpoles that basically haven't, uh, haven't developed yet. There's, there's no, uh, not even back legs. It's actually been quite amazing because there's been a considerable difference in development. Um, it's taken 41 days for, for them, actually the first frog to morph out and yet these here from the same, same uh, uh, clutch have, haven't even developed. It's quite strange how they've all taken different times. And over here we have one that is just climbing out the water. Let me try and get hold of him. And he's ready now to, to basically go into that tub. We'll put him with the other guys. He's climbing out. As you can see, he's still got a tail that will reabsorb and uh, probably take two or three days for that tail to reabsorb. But breeding in captivity, no matter how successful, comes with its own restrictions. Frogs from the same gene pool can't just be released into the same habitat. Genetic diversity, especially with the limited habitat available, is crucial. Jean's research is contributing to government's biodiversity management plans and if changes to this bill are approved, the frog's habitat will be given special status, essentially rendering them no-go areas for development. This is not only good news for the Pickersgill frog, but the other frogs and creatures that share its environment. <laughs>